It's Hunter with the Jansport team. How are you doing, Whitney? I'm good. How are you, Hunter? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk to you and to get the chance to do this. Absolutely. All right, let's get started. Um, so Whitney, you are our first Light in the Load live host. Um, what we're going to do is just go through some different topics and questions, which will be on our iPad here. Um, and we're going to get your expertise. This week's topic is all about isolation, um, all about what mental health looks like during this stay at home order. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I'm Whitney. I'm a licensed therapist here in Miami. Um, and I'm so excited to work with Jansport on these live talks where we can dive into some mental health topics that we know are on all of your minds. Um, this, week to this week's topic, like you said, is about isolation. And I know with the stay-at-home orders, a lot of people are worried about their mental health and the mental health of the people that they love. So let's dive into some of the questions we've been seeing. Awesome. Um, the first topic <laughs> is <laughs> I'm losing my mind in isolation. We have seen so many people talking about this online. It's obviously everywhere right now. Uh, one question we had is like, why does my mood feel all over the place? Why is this so crazy right now? Yeah, so first I want to validate it and say that it's so normal to feel like you're losing your mind right now. Um, we've really lost our sense of security. We don't know what lies ahead, and that can be really scary. Um, your mind and your body are interpreting everything that's going on right now as danger. You know, we're not used to being at home for this long or seeing people wearing masks in the grocery store or on the street. And whenever your body feels under threat, it's going to react. So this typically leads to, like, changes in mood, changes in your sleep, um, just a feeling of being all over the place. And it's important to remember that this situation is not normal, so it's not going to feel normal. <laughs> it's great that you say that because our next question is, how can I try and feel more normal? Um, definitely seeing a lot of content out there about this, like how do I get back? How do I get back to that you know, routine? Yeah, totally. So I think when things are very abnormal, it's important to get back to the basics. And what I mean by that is like sleep, eating, water, social interaction, and being consistent. Sometimes we lose sight of all of this when we're stressed. And it seems like these are really easy things we should be doing. But I know like I forget sometimes, oh my gosh, I haven't had water all day because I felt overwhelmed. So I recommend adding in one small habit every day and waiting until you've gotten into a rhythm before you add something else. So like if you want to change uh, the time that you wake up in the morning, you would start by really like rolling back that alarm clock by maybe only a couple of minutes each day so that you're not setting yourself up for failure. I love that. I love going back to basics. I suddenly forgot how to drink water when this started. So I'm still <laughs> learning um, how to reincorporate that. Uh, let's look at the next topic we've seen. Um, I feel like I should be doing more with my quarantine. I see so many people um, talking about this, whether it's I should be accomplishing more or I should be having more fun or I should be um, enjoying this time in some ways, weird as it sounds, there's a lot of pressure right now. Uh, so what we wanted to ask is how do we stop that fear of missing out or falling behind? Yeah, I've definitely heard a lot of people saying this. Um, I think social media plays a huge role in this too. There's so many posts going around of like, make the most of your quarantine or maybe seeing how other people are spending it and sharing that online. Um, but I think it's important to remember that what we see from people is really just such a small percentage of their life. We're comparing like our reality to their highlight reel and we're probably not seeing the whole story. Um, I find that it's helpful for me to remind myself of that often. I would also suggest like coming back to what's important to you. What are your values right now? What do you want to prioritize? Maybe that's 
rest versus achievement. And it's okay if your goals are different from everybody else's. For sure. I've definitely been on Instagram um, about 100 times more than I normally would. Uh, and the pressure is real out there. Um, if you guys are just tuning into this live session, we are talking to therapist Whitney Goodman. She's giving us some perspective on how to stay mentally healthy during this crazy stay at home time. Um, let's look at another scenario here. Um, it feels like all the things I was looking forward to are canceled. Um, obviously this is like a huge one for so many people. Everyone had plans, um, for the spring and summer. Um, and obviously that's not happening for a lot of people. Yeah. I think the only thing we can say about this is that like, it really sucks. It's a huge bummer to have all of these rites of passage and rituals and things that you look forward to every year or have been looking forward to for a long time be canceled. Um, and I definitely want to say I'm, I'm sorry for anybody who's experiencing that and not having like graduation or prom or an internship or any of those other important things. Yeah, rip to all our um, summer plans, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but how can I stay positive when it feels like I'm missing out when I'm looking at my calendar and all the things I was supposed to do and it's not happening anymore? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of like feeling emotions and going through the grieving process before we jump to positivity. I think being positive too soon can feel really rough and actually doesn't help. So I would recommend like first just noticing that this really sucks. You know, you're missing out on a lot. It's okay to be upset about it. It is a big deal. Um, and once you feel like you've experienced that sadness or that grief and gone through that process, then you can start creating like new things to look forward to or working on future plans. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I love that, like, no pressure to be happy and positive all the time. This is a crazy, crazy period. Um, what would you say to someone that, like, wants to ask, how can I create new things to look forward to? We're obviously in a completely different lifestyle right now. What do we do in that respect? Yeah, so things are still so uncertain that I think it's important that we like stagger our expectations and our goals and start setting things up that we have access to right now. So maybe a different thing that you can look forward to that's online or depending on like the restrictions in your area that you can do. And then as things start to improve, you can start creating more opportunities um, for celebration. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. I encourage people to get really creative and find a way to celebrate like these milestones that we're talking about in a way that's memorable and important for them. Yeah, I think it's like really important to find new ways to celebrate. Um, and it's not gonna be the same, but it's still important to try and do. Um, but yeah, thank you for that perspective, because I know a lot of people have been struggling and dealing with this. Um, let's talk about some things that we can do to stay connected. Obviously, another huge topic. Um, how can I reach out to someone if I'm feeling lonely? I personally, you ought to need to know all this, but live alone in my apartment right now. Um, I know a lot of people are separated from their friends, their college friends, high school friends, uh, adult friends. How can I just reach out to someone out of the blue? Yeah, so uh, again, I think so many of us have been feeling lonely, whether we're isolated in our homes or we've even been around certain people that we don't necessarily feel connected to. So I would say don't overcomplicate this. Like it's okay to just reach out to somebody with a picture or a funny video or an article, ask them a question. You don't have to come right out and say like, I'm lonely, I wanna talk to you. Unless you feel like you're in a space where you wanna share that. Um, but it's totally okay just to like try to create connection in a really like benign way. I love that, especially because it's not about just during social distancing, right? Like we can all feel lonely sometimes, even during 
real normal life, there still might be someone I want to reach out to. There still might be someone I haven't talked to in a while um, that I want to reconnect with. So I love that advice just for life in general. Um, another one that we wanted to ask you is if someone seems like they're having a hard time, um, if they don't seem like they're adjusting to this well, which like you said, is completely normal. Um, how could I reach out to them and talk to them or make sure they're okay? Yeah, I think we can apply some of the same suggestions that we just talked about in the last question. Sometimes when people are having a hard time, they find it really hard to answer like that, how are you doing question or how's everything been going for you? So it's okay to reach out in a non-threatening way that's really just like sharing something with them, sending something, or even sharing about how you've been doing to kind of open up the conversation and show them that it's a safe space to talk about that. Typically, once you get the conversation started and it feels more comfortable, I think people then are a lot more willing to share how they've been doing and ask yeah. for help. Yeah, definitely. I, I think <laughs> we talked about this the other day is like just sending someone a meme can actually go so far into like opening up, starting that conversation or just like talking to someone that you haven't spoken to because you've been stuck in your house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially even a meme about like, there's so many going around about struggles like during this that you can send that and like it opens up a conversation whatever exactly it is. like like you know i'm struggling i'm pulling my hair out and then they're like yes <laughs> me too girl it's okay exactly yes. yes um so yeah let's i know we have i think like one more question and we can keep talking um let's look here Oh, how can I find motivation during these times? That kind of goes back a little bit to what we were talking about before, but it's like, I want to accomplish things. I have time to do things, um, but it's a weird situation in my mind right now and I cannot get motivated. Yeah, motivation is going to be harder right now, just in general. Like we talked about at the beginning of this, that things are not normal right now. Your body and, and like your brain has... 100 tabs open that are running at all times, you know, thinking about things that might not really be at the forefront of your consciousness. So I would say first, like start with some compassion that you just might not be as motivated. Um, and then also remembering that motivation isn't just something that happens, it has to be built over time. So it's pretty expected that it's going to be hard for you to build right now. I would start by doing one small thing each day and let the motivation build on itself. So let's say you wanted to start exercising. You could start by going on like a five minute walk each day and picking something that is easy for you to achieve. Um, the first goal that you set should be really simple and something that you know, okay, I can get this done and that's gonna help you build the motivation over time. Yeah, I can like definitely relate to that in my life too is like you're you got to set yourself up for success right <laughs> because you you don't want to give yourself something and then feel like bad that you couldn't accomplish it um because maybe we got ahead of ourselves a little bit <laughs> yeah absolutely then it just it kills the motivation if you set yourself up you know with too big of a mountain to climb from the start yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we went through these questions pretty fast. You had such good advice. I wanted to ask you if you had anything else that's like been on your mind or that you would want to share with our audience during this time. It can be related to these questions or just anything else um, that strikes you right now. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we touched on in all of these questions is like going back to this self-compassion of just not being so hard on yourself. Um, and that's what I think is like the foundation of everything that's going on right now and getting through it well is making sure that you can say like, okay, this isn't normal. I'm doing my best. I'm going to find the way that I can get through this in the best way. And also knowing that everybody else around us is really 
doing the best that they can right now and their coping style might look really different from ours. Yeah, I love when you said that because we're all going through this for the first time, right? Like no one knows how to deal with a quarantine situation because most of us have never had to deal with it before. You know what I mean? Um, another question um, real kind of related to this is like, what would you say for someone that like kind of wants to get their mind off of things? There's a lot going on right now. And I think a lot of people are like stuck replaying or like thinking about isolation like what would you say to someone that wants to kind of get that off their mind yeah i think distraction like gets a bad rap sometimes but in moments like these like right now we're in the middle of a trauma uh we're in the middle of a crisis so it's okay to want to like check out sometimes and watch tv watch a movie listen to music like hang out with people, sit on an app all like scrolling all day, as long as it's something that's making you feel better um, and it's not leading you to feel worse, I think that distraction is an okay coping skill right now. Just a little positive distraction. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you're sitting like scrolling through Instagram, looking at pictures of people that make you feel bad about yourself, and beat yourself up that is not a positive distraction but i think watching like funny videos looking at memes whatever it is that can be a really good distraction and a, and a helpful one yes i love that so no worries to the people that have maybe been playing animal crossing every day it's <laughs> all right um i think this has been so amazing you have given us so many things to kind of like think about um especially as far as you know what you said about not comparing yourself to other people um realizing that it's okay not to feel normal um i think those are all amazing things and thank you so much um for joining us in this um this kind of thing we're trying to do here because not everyone can have access to mental health um, kind of professional conversations right now or the mental health um, kind of things that they would normally lean on uh, in their normal life. Um, so thank you so, so much for giving us some of your expertise. Of course. It's been great to be a part of this, and I, I'm really grateful that companies like Jansport are stepping up and, and prioritizing mental health, especially right now. Yeah, it's like somebody's got to do it, right? I think <laughs> we are so lucky too to have people um, like you to help. Next week, um, we're going to be doing this same thing again. Thank you, everyone, to tune that tuned in to this one um, and got all this good information. And we're going to keep doing it every week. Next week, we're going to be talking about compassion fatigue. It's all going to be about how to stay informed and overwhelmed. Um, Whitney, we are going to see you again in a couple of weeks, um, and we're going to have another therapist join us next week, but you will be back, um, and we're excited for all these conversations that are coming up. I will definitely be tuning in for the next one, and I'm excited to do another one of these with you guys soon. Thanks, Whitney. Thank you so much for your time. Of course. Bye. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks.